Today, you are gonna learn how to stand more confidently on one leg with some exercises that might surprise you because we're not actually gonna do them in standing. And in my opinion, these non-standing exercises to improve standing are probably more effective than actually standing. So I know that was confusing, but I promise you by the end of this video, you're gonna understand why non-standing exercises might be a better road to actually improve single leg standing, as well as exercises that might surprise you, but will absolutely take your rehab routine to the next level. Today, you're gonna learn how to stand more confidently on one leg without actually standing. And for those of you who are already standing, you might be surprised to know that not actually standing is probably the best road to relearn how to stand more confidently on one leg. I promise you it's really not that confusing, but I guarantee you that by the end of this video, you're gonna have a better appreciation for why non-standing exercises are a great avenue to improve single leg standing balance, as well as have a whole new list of exercises that will absolutely improve your single leg standing confidence, which directly translates into improved confidence with walking and an improved overall quality of life. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara, I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and your health to live an overall more active, more mobile, pain-free, happier, healthier life. Okay, now let's unravel that intro and kind of make all of this make sense. By starting with, why does someone not feel confident standing on one leg in the first place? Well, the obvious one, if you watch this channel, you probably have some sort of a deficit in your neurologic system. Your neurologic system is what helps to activate the right muscles at the right time to support your body weight. So when there is some kind of a breakdown in that system, when you go to stand on one leg, the muscles either don't activate in a timely manner, which does not allow you to support your body weight at the appropriate times, or for some of you, you have no connection with those muscles at all, and in that case, you just automatically crumple to the ground. So that's one reason why you might not feel confident, and rightfully so. The other reason might be that you have some abnormal synergy patterns that makes you not feel confident on that leg. We talk about that these abnormal synergy patterns quite a bit on this channel, but after any type of a neurologic injury, muscles just link up abnormally together. There are two main patterns that emerge. One is an extensor synergy pattern, whereas when one joint in the lower leg extends, they all kind of want to, want to extend. That means your foot points. So when you go to stand on that leg and you need your knee to stay straight, your foot points and it could push you backwards. The other synergy pattern is a flexor synergy pattern. And what that means is that when one joint bends, they all kind of want to bend. And when that happens, when the hip bends, the knee wants to bend and the ankle wants to flex. For some people, the uh, flexor synergy pattern somehow gets triggered when they're standing on that leg and so that leg will crumple to the ground. The other reason might be, and this, uh, pe this, this becomes especially true when it comes to walking, people can't, someone can't dissociate, meaning they can't have their two sides of their body doing opposite things at the same time. They kind of want to do everything at the same time together simultaneously. Why is that a problem? When we go to walk, one knee needs to bend and one knee needs to stay straight. So for example, let's say you're standing on a leg that might be a little bit weaker. When you go to bend the other leg up, it might not, not actually be due to the weakness, like your muscles can't support the load of your body weight, but it could be that both legs are trying to do the same thing at the same time. Now this doesn't have to do with stance control, but it is something that a lot of you guys deal with. You can have the other pattern or dissociative issue show up, whereas when you try and stand on a stronger leg and you need to bend the weaker leg to bring it through, it will not bend. So for those of you where your leg feels like it's getting stuck to the ground, that's one potential issue. Your brain is trying to keep the stronger leg straight and the opposite side of your body cannot do the opposite motion at the same time. 
And now, this is the really important part. Some of you might have one of these issues. Some of you might have two of these issues that we just went over. Some of you might have none of these issues. So I get more and more people in the comments that uh, are commenting or suggesting that they have certain issues. And just because I talk about it on this channel and just because it might be something that just me and my experience have seen after a stroke does not mean that it applies to everyone. And in fact, each one of these things that I talk about probably applies to a small subset. So my suggestion is, is you just kind of go back, listen to that explanation that I just said, stop this video, don't move forward. Think about your walking, how it feels, video it, watch it, and maybe try and come to a better understanding of what your walking impairments or deficits or deviations might be and really decide if any of those things apply to you. And again, for some of you, none of those things are going to apply. Okay. So now that we got all, all, that, all that out of the way, why is all of that important? Well, if you cannot stand on one leg because of an issue activating the muscles in the leg, it's very, very hard to practice relearning activating those muscles when your brain knows that it actually has to support the load of your body. So what could happen and happens a lot is that you just compensate unintentionally with your stronger side. Along those same lines, for some of you, because you can't activate those muscles, it's just not safe. So in those two instances, absolutely, it's better to come up with some alternative positions that are not in standing. Okay, so that's probably the most obvious reason why someone might choose to do sitting and laying down exercises to improve stance to control versus standing. But now let's get into a little bit of the more nuanced reasons. The other one I mentioned was abnormal synergy patterns. You have these all or none movement patterns. There's no ability to grade them. They just go or no go. That is the only signal these muscles receive. And that's not really how our muscles work when we're in standing. There's a lot of kind of like fine tuning. There's multiple muscles working together that are timed perfectly, that are coming in at the right time and exiting at the right time. I've used the example of like an orchestra before. You know, you can just be a the piano, someone at the piano just banging on the keys. And yes, that's producing sound, but it's not actually producing beautiful music. Movement, walking, executing any kind of a purposeful movement requires this symphony of muscles, muscles coming in, muscles exiting. And to learn that, it's really hard to do that in standing because your brain is automatically going to revert to kind of these primitive ingrained patterns that are we're born with that are hardwired and they're just going to come out. And so it's going to be just like a kid in that orchestra, just kind of banging on the keyboard in the background. They're going to be loud and they're going to interfere with almost every other potential muscle that would like to come in and be part of the party. So the exercises we go through today and sitting and laying down, they help you to kind of get that beautiful sound back by grading a movement, making a movement a little bit easier, slowly increasing the amount of pressure that's on the leg, using cues in different positions. We're going to go over all this to make sure that the quieter muscles are able to join the party. And then that third kind of bucket that I mentioned is dissociation, the inability to separate right and left but also the inability to separate upper and lower. And now that's not a direct relationship to balance, single leg standing balance confidence. But what I have found is that the awkwardness of walking when you cannot separate, meaning your upper body cannot rotate independent of your lower body, 
the, that, the reason our bodies move like that when we walk is it really does come down to physics. So it's really like a counter rotation that's kind of like going to oppose the rotation of that lower body. It makes us more efficient and it's the way that we feel the most comfortable. So when you lose that ability after a neurologic injury, that to me, some people will perceive that as you know, that they're not walking good, or they will explain to me that that's what they don't like about their walking. They don't like the way that feels. And that can also impact your balance confidence. So doing things in sitting and laying down, which we're going to go over today, can help you to kind of relearn how to dissociate those parts of your body that are nearly impossible to start doing in standing. Now, why is that explanation important? Again, because you're going to see components of isolated movement in the exercise we go through today, where you're just isolating a movement out of an abnormal synergy pattern. So what does that mean? We're trying to uncouple those muscles or those joints from working together. So I've talked about this recently in a couple of videos, but you do want to be able to extend the hip without bending the knee. You do want to be able to extend the knee without the foot pointing. So if you know that it's an abnormal synergy pattern that's in, uh, interfering with your balance confidence, then those are the things that you want to look for in the exercises, and those are the exercises you kind of want to flag. Okay? And again, there's going to be a lot of exercises that most of you can put X's through, but kind of keep that in mind. Those would be the exercises that you kind of want to flag. If you know that you have an issue with the dissociation, the exercises that you want to flag are anything that we do, and we are going to go through some where the upper, uh, where the right and left side of the body, they're doing opposite movements. And even some exercises we're going to go through today where your legs might be doing one thing and your arms might be doing something else. Those would be the exercises that you would want to flag. And then one last thing I want to mention before we get into the exercises, which really does apply to all of you, everyone, if you've had a neurologic injury, is just weight bearing in general does give the brain information. We call this kind of like a bottom up approach. So just the act of weight bearing creates changes in the brain to develop a movement pattern to support your body weight when you're standing on that leg. So always keep that in mind. So anything we do today that is encouraging weight bearing, even if you're someone that's already walking, because remember, some of you could be walking, but you're loading that leg or you're supporting your body weight via an abnormal synergy pattern. So keep that in mind that you could just be doing an uh, an extensor synergy pattern or your body's just using an extensor synergy pattern when you're standing on that leg. And remember, we're trying to get back to creating that symphony. We just don't want that kid in the background banging on the keyboard, okay? So anything you do in weight bearing is bottom up. You're going to get some kind of a, what I think, a positive adaptive neural response um, from the brain to initiate some of that top down. And I will try and point out those higher level exercises, despite being in sitting and laying down, ones that I would consider higher level exercises for those of you who are already walking that just want to make sure that you are getting that good weight bearing through that leg. Okay. So hopefully all of that made sense. I know some of you do not like these explanations, but I think they're so, so, so important to really get you to the exercises that are going to be the most beneficial for you. Now, with all of that said, we do have some membership programs. Our lowest level membership is our Browns membership. And with that membership, you will get access to all the PDF handouts that go along with these videos that are here on YouTube. This video does have a PDF handout that has pictures, and descriptions of all the exercises we go through today. So if you're a bronze member or a gold member, you can just pull out that handout and cross off all the exercises that don't apply to you to get you 
to the most efficient exercises and allow you to easily incorporate those into your home exercise routine. But then also we have a gold membership program. With your gold membership, you do get access to all the PDF handouts. But in addition to that, you get an access to an entire vault of exercises that are the exercises, the, the vault that I pull from when I am creating a home exercise program for one of my patients that I see in person. You just have access to that entire vault so that you can use these videos here on YouTube where I really, my main mission is to empower you to be able to help yourself in your recovery journey, but you can use that, teach yourself about your own movement problems, and you can use the exercise vault to kind of create your own home exercise program. So to learn more about our membership programs and to sign up, you can visit rehab-hq.com, as well as learn about all the other perks that come along with the memberships. But now enough about all that, let's go ahead and dive into the exercises. All right, so I showed three different variations of kind of like a modified bridge slash just kind of like what we call like a hook line position in general. Now, the rationale behind this one might seem pretty evident, but you might not know which variation is right for you. The basic march, super, super valuable for those of you that can't dissociate, meaning one leg has to lift up. You don't want the other leg to come up off the uh, mat or flop out to the side. So as easy as that marching looks, what we're trying to do is activate somewhat of an uh, out of synergy pattern because you do need to push the opposite leg down into the mat. So you're working those hip extensors a little bit when you bring the other leg up, which yes, I've seen some people can't do. When they lift one leg up, the other one wants to come up off of the mat as well. So try it. If it's e too easy for you, then you can move on to variation number two. That second variation I showed where your legs weren't doing anything, but we were hooking a resistance band under the weaker foot and just moving the strong arm. Now, what happens in this case, if some of you really cannot activate the hip extensors without the leg shooting out, what you might see is that either when you pull up with your arm, your knee just comes up off of the mat or your leg shoots out straight because it feels the resistance of the band, you're trying to stop it, okay? So this is also an extremely valuable exercise for a lot of you because it will train you how to bear weight, but we're actually adding a little bit of load that's more than just the previous exercise, but less than actually standing. So hopefully all of that made sense. And then that third variation is just a harder, same rationale, as with your feet on the mat, it's just a little bit of a harder variation. So if you are someone who's a little bit higher level, but you're concerned or you might be thinking you're using an abnormal synergy pattern to stand and you can't actually activate those muscles in that nice symphony that we're looking for, putting your foot up on the wall, you're learning a little how to bring those hip extensors in a little bit more. You want those instruments to be a little bit louder but you wanna keep those knee flexors nice and quiet. You don't want the leg shooting out. And then by adding the resistance band, again, you're adding more load than without it, but less load than actually when you're standing. So I'm gonna show you all three of those again. Hopefully all of that made sense. So the first one, again, just to review, is just a march, practicing dissociating left from right, but also when you're lifting up maybe a stronger leg, not letting this leg flop out to the side and really working on pushing down through the heel without your leg shooting out straight, okay? So a lot going on, but because you're laying down and your trunk is supported, a lot of times it's a lot easier. All right, and then like I had mentioned, this next one, you are putting the band in your stronger arm. So for a lot of you, you will be able to do this with the arm and you don't want the foot to come up. You don't want the leg to flop out and you don't want the leg to shoot out. And you don't want the leg to lift up when you lift your arm up, which might happen for some of you. 
Okay, so you really do have to push down. You want to, again, think about pushing down through the heel and just lifting that arm straight up. And then this is the hardest variation again. This is the leg that we're working. And then you're just pulling up with the opposite arm. Okay, it really requires a lot more demand from those hip extensors, but keeping the knee extensors a little bit quieter. This will ensure if you are someone that's using an extensor synergy pattern to stand, you really won't be able to in this position. All right, so again, we're learning how to load the involved leg out of a synergy pattern while also dissociating upper body from lower body. But again, for this one, there's the easiest variation, which I recommend everyone start with and make sure you can do, and that's just lean forward and come back up. Lean forward and come back up again. Leaning forward and having to come back up, you're having to push down with that leg. If you wanted to challenge yourself a little bit more, get right on the edge so that your thigh is not supported on the mat and do the same thing again. But always start sitting all the way back in the chair first with your thigh supported. If you can do that, you can try reaching towards the outside of your weaker leg. Now we're starting to add a little bit of a rotational component, but also we're working what we call like your limits of stability. So for a lot of you, you don't really like to get to the outside edge of this foot in standing. And so therefore you just keep all your weight over on your other foot for safety. So you're starting to work that limit of stability. You're starting to get close to the edge, kind of experimenting how close to the edge can you get and still not fall off the cliff, okay? So you're working that, trying to experiment, getting close to the edge of that cliff, while also working how to get some of those quieter muscles to kind of come in and join the party, primarily the muscles that pull you back when you do get a little bit too far over the edge of the cliff, okay? So when you start to go over the edge of the cliff, we have a lot of muscles that kick in to kind of pull us back. A lot of you, those muscles just aren't um, loud enough. And so you, every time you get to that point, you fall or you step across. So we're learning how to bring those muscles back in, but because you're sitting, you're in a safe position. So it's easier to kind of allow some of the louder muscles to quiet down. So some of those quieter muscles can ramp up a little bit. And then of course, again, because your knee is bent, you're not in a synergy pattern. So for some of you, if you're using a synergy pattern to an extensor synergy pattern to stand, you really can't do it in this position. And you'll know you're using a synergy pattern if when you get in this position, you can't reach across um, because you, you feel like you can't get any pressure down through that leg. Okay, so then if you can do that, you know, you can try reaching all the way across and see if you can bring yourself back. Reach all the way across without letting your knees move all over the place and see if you can bring yourself back. That's that dissociation component. Again, this is just the same resistance band we used laying down. For some of you, you're not gonna be able to pull up. This is the stronger arm. This is the more involved leg. You're not gonna be able to pull up on that band because that foot's gonna feel like it's coming off of the ground. My suggestion is you start with it hooked around your foot because then uh, you don't really need as much pressure pushing down through the foot. You need some so that your leg doesn't come off the ground when you pull up with your arm, but not a lot. But the real gem or gold behind this exercise is to take the band and put it under your foot and to pull up. Now, this really will keep you honest because if your foot is not pushing down really hard, that band's gonna slide out from under your foot, okay? So 
don't, the advanced variation is don't hook it under your foot. Just set your foot on it and see if you can pull up without it sliding out from underneath your foot. And then that is it for this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful. That's just a couple of variations of exercises that you can do. There's a ton more. That's why I gave that detailed rationale. Don't forget, we do have an entire vault of exercises that once you really start to understand your condition and you kind of know the uh, what types of exercises you need to be adding or could be adding to your routine to improve your walking and your mobility, our membership would be perfect for you. You get an exercise vault with over 400 exercises in it where you can use what you're learning here on YouTube to select the best exercises for you. You can put them into your own home exercise program so that every time you log in, they're just all listed there. But in addition to that, if you are a gold member, something new we started this year is you do get access to our monthly webinars where we're kind of going through everything to know about the neurologic system, as well as some topics on how to optimize your rehab program as far as lifestyle behaviors, nutrition, sleep, and what kind of some of the evidence says about some of those habits, as well as getting into neuroplasticity, some of the novel treatments that you guys are curious about, movement problems, how to correct movement problems, and a whole lot more. But it's super exciting for me to create these webinars because my ultimate goal is just to empower all of you with as many tools as possible so that you can really take your rehab and your life to the next level. To learn more about our membership programs, again, visit rehab-hq.com. If you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you'll get notified every time I upload new videos. If you want to get exercises throughout the week, you can head on over to Instagram where I post one to two exercises every single week. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.